But if there is a path here, the path is to see what is. That's the real root of inquiry. And seeing what is means seeing who you are or who you think you are. Why are we talking about what personality does in this life and, and where, it, where it has its pain points, its attachment points? Why don't we talk about um, the, the unconditional layer of, of consciousness? And, and yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good question. It's like, why? Why bother? Why not? You know, the argument would be why? But don't focus on that stuff because that's not real. You know, they may be saying focus on the real stuff the, the, the all you are is consciousness. And uh, this is just a diversion. You could argue, well, you're just stuck in the story or, or the relative. And uh, so I think it's a very good question. Uh, so. What are we talking about here? Everybody who's on <clears throat> seeking or talking about this knows that there is a um, there's something. You know, we could call it it. We could call it. You know, some people call it the Tao. Okay, let's put it this way. I'm going to interrupt myself. It seems to me there's two kinds of people. One person A which is the main uh, ingredient of the group personality. They believe that who they are is who they are and that it's real and that um, that's all there is. The, the spiritual stuff is just what they would call woo-woo. You know, the relative is, is the only thing, really. I mean, they may have religious beliefs, but that's a whole different area of religion, I would say. You know, even they, you can hold religious beliefs but still maintain the idea that you are a doer, you're in control of your life in that sense. And in that life, <clears throat> life is relatively simple because there's only a few things, you, you know, you need to earn money, you need to get food on the table, you have values, you have your family, and all these things are primary things that you need to fulfill your life. And in that sense, as an, it's kind of easy because it's not complicated. As long as you get those things in, you know, of course, you could, there's still suffering and everything. But basically, the way it functions is if you get those basic things in, you're, you're satisfied. So the second type of person, those things that would satisfy person A don't satisfy person B. They may have all those things. They may be comfortable, they may be relatively happy, you know, they may have a job that's okay, they're earning enough money, but those things won't satisfy something in them, some indefinable thing in them, which I suppose I would call the yearning. So there's a yearning for something that they don't know what it is, but they know there is something else. So if you are one of these people who, who in category B, of course, it's natural then you start seeking and you start seeking what that thing is, that spiritual thing is. It's, you know, you know, it's called spiritual, but you don't know what it is. And then obviously you start uh, tuning and listening to people who talk in that area, to all the speakers out there. And um, there's an obvious natural way to go about it, which is that there's this thing called the spiritual or the absolute up there, and then there's a relative. And the yearning, this, they think, relates to the uh, absolute, which in a way it does, I agree with that. But the mistake that can be made is that I focus on that, I'm kind of pointing up there, it's not really up there, but the absolute, and by doing that, I achieve it, I find it in my life, and I leave behind this, meaning the relative. So to me, that is a mistake, and that's an imbalance. Um, so the, the way they go around about that is that by the false idea is that if I think about the absolute and the spiritual, if I have beliefs about it, which I live by, if I sub, um, submerge myself in concepts about it, you know, say non-duality, you can know all the concepts, you can immerse yourself in it. 
So the idea is that by doing that, that you achieve it or you enter it fully. And and that's, you know, to some extent, that's understandable that you would think that because, you know, what we focus on does to some extent become our experience. You know, there's the famous line, if you if you think about a lemon, you can almost sort of feel soundness in your mouth. What you focus on enters your consciousness and to an extent you experience it. So that's being applied to the absolute. If I just read enough books, if I focus on these thoughts, you know, this is where affirmation work comes in. And yeah, as you know very well, if I think about this enough, and just believe it enough, I can brainwash myself into it. Now, that could be true that it works like that. But in fact, my experience is it doesn't work like that. You can't force yourself into it. You can't trick yourself into it. Um, and there's, I think there's a sort of basic rule of why that doesn't work. Because my experience of this is that you can't it, well, first of all, you can't ignore the relative. The, the, the absolute, the spiritual, if we want to call it that, is found within and through the relative. So in the relative level, we all have lives, we all have identities, we all have things we might want to achieve and we want to be happy. You know, that's all part of natural human life. Um, but something, as as we know, grows up, which here we call personality, which some people will call ego, but I, that is not really the same thing. You know, ego is a word that's used in many different ways, but essentially it generally often applies to the sense of a self and identity. And, you know, I would argue that that's what we need to operate as a human being. So when people say, well, the ego is bad and the ego is made, to be the thing that you want to leave behind. I don't agree with that because we we all have a self, a sense of self, and we need to uh, live that out as long as we're human beings, whatever that is. We all need to function still. You know, I needed to call you to make this call. So that's why I don't use the word ego because it's not accurate. But the word personality, again, you know, People have to know exactly how I use that word or how Gurdjieff or Jean Klein or many others have used it. I'm kind of with them on this. And obviously people who know this work will know what I mean. The personality is the full self. So we all need a self in which to operate in the world. It becomes a host and the personality takes over and the personality is the response to the wound and the loss of our natural state. And suddenly we find ourselves with all sorts of strategies and patterns and emotions that are to do and have arisen out of the wound. So in order to avoid the pain of the wound, you know, say our wound is around not feeling lovable. So then uh, the personality develops to try and prove we're lovable. So then it has these strategies in which to carry that out. Now, there's many configurations of personalities, but it all has the same taste. And what happens over time is we become aligned, aligned with this false self. And we, we actually think that is who we are. Uh, so it's very important to clear away the mists to find out who we are. The first thing you have to confront is... Well, if you think of that personality, um, that's the first thing that has to be seen through. So someone with a strong personality and all the patterns of personality can have a certain yearning and start to yearn for the absolute and the spiritual while maintaining the personality. And uh, it does this by, you know, thinking about spiritual, uh, taking on beliefs, affirming things about it, immersing oneself in that whole world. But uh, then all the time, the personality is still running. So what I'm saying here is that uh, the personality is the gatekeeper, the key. That's still a personality just doing the spiritual thing. It's never going to be harmonious because it's not complete. It's a personality that's doing something. 
And what we're talking about is through the dissolution of the loss of identification with personality, the absolute is revealed. So it's not like something you have to chase, you have to focus on, you have to, uh, you know, affirm or believe anything. It's actually just what's relieved. So the person seeing through the personality, the reason we talk about it is because it is the key to the whole thing where it becomes harmonious rather than a spiritual doing or any spiritual bypassing. A, a key factor in all of this is what we call choices awareness. And as you know, choices awareness is not selective in what it falls on. So the scenario I've described where the absolute is made a thing out there that we want to achieve through these strategies of focusing on it, uh, but we don't want to focus on the fact that, oh, I'm, I'm an angry person or this person triggered me or there's a lot of sadness here. So immediately that is not choices awareness, that is personality awareness, which means the personality is saying, I want that, but I don't want that. I'm not going to look at that, but I will look towards that. Immediately that's not, well, for example, that's not non-duality, that's making a split, saying I like this, but I don't like that. That, in a sense, is keeping you from the absolute already because you're kind of maintaining the machinery that's making that split. So in this, there's immersion in whatever is there and a seeing of whatever is there. There's no pulling back from, there's no pretending it's not there. What is there is there. If your personality is angry, it's angry. But what there is bridging this is uh, the... Choices awareness being used for inquiry. And the inquiry is, am I just that angry person? Am I just that is personality? Is that who I am? Or are, am I something that was already there before all that developed? I think an in interesting question in this context is also um, identification. Because um, when you talk about the different methods of, of let's say, achieving choiceless awareness, then I think when, when you wish for, uh, when you wish for freedom or you wish for uh, enlightenment or something, I think it automatically also shows identification, isn't it? I mean, these are all like, what do you call doing, like efforts and actually identified movements to, to, to open up. So it's literally personality saying, I want, I want to get out of this and I want to be uh, awake. So what you're saying is the personality has used the arena, the spiritual arena to just avoid its suffering. It sees, oh, here's a way I can avoid the pain of that by looking over here. That's what you're saying, is it? Yeah, it's, it's the old game of, of converting into a spiritual personality. So you can, yeah. you can be lighter, more open, loving, all these things, but still still be a personality. Yeah, it's still a, another identity. It's just a, it's been given a spin and a polish and it's a spiritual one. And yeah, we, we all know people like that. And so this is more fundamental. This is like, like you've got to go beyond that. That's just another game being played. Yeah, it, the, the inquiry is not going deep enough. It knows that person maybe knows there's something else, but it's and is willing to look at that to an extent, but it's not willing to look at where it is and what is manifesting right now as their experience of being a human being. Mm -hmm. Actually, the area where it hurts most. It can do. Yes, it can do. And I think the yearning provides the impetus to go beyond the like I don't want to go there because it's painful we we can feel it's painful but the yearning trumps that it, its goal is beyond that its goal is to find out its goal is not to just avoid suffering so if there's suffering there will be suffering suffering has to happen sometimes to get to beyond suffering there's no other way it's like a fire that burns away the false you know yeah, and, and once you're in the inquiry, then it's also experience. Like when, if you experience once that it works, the, uh, this pain and this this mechanism of trying to evade 
or, or not go there. It's actually um, hiding something good. Then you can even rely on on the experience of, yeah, it has worked in that case, so it's going to work in that case. Yes. Also. So it engenders a kind of trust in what comes to you and your ability to let go into it, really, rather than the contraction of, Oh, don't want to go into that. There's a sort of trust like, yeah, okay, this might be difficult, but I'm up for it because I don't want to limit my expansion into this. I don't want to limit my uh, finding of this. Once you know that cutting off experiences uh, and saying, I don't want to go there actually stops the fulfillment of this, you're not interested in cutting them off anymore, even if they are very painful yeah um i'm i'm thinking about these these ideas of old and new also um recently because uh the, the personality wants to stick to what is well known to it and, and not go to the to the unknown yeah but at the same time you're talking about returning to the natural state isn't it so you, you're basically at the same time going into the unknown but also to the to the natural uh, state. Yes, what was originally known. Yeah, but it's so it. forgotten, no? So forgotten that it becomes yeah something new. We know this somewhere. We came with this, but it's this what is laid over the top. It's hidden it so well, and of course, as time goes on, and we acclimatize to what's laid on top, we take it to be real. Like I said. So the inquiry, and dare I say it, the search, is to find out what is real. Like, are those things laid on top real? And, and as you find out they're not, they kind of fall away. And then the whole panorama is revealed. What, what, it, what it was obscuring, yeah. Yeah, it, it's interesting that it doesn't work through, through this other approach of, of just visualizing it talking about it, because the, the personality is such a strong uh, configuration, it's really rooted in the, the whole system, like it doesn't let go. Its whole purpose is to maintain itself. So um, it loves the idea of doing, of having a program, of having a practice, of having a, uh, you know, things to believe in. It loves all that, and that's why spiritual programs that promote themselves through through those things are those are the ones that get a lot of hits, and um, you know because the personalities latch onto them and give them the appearance that they're doing something and getting somewhere, uh, and the ones that kind of say what I'm saying generally don't, because the personalities sniff that out and say. Yeah, I don't want to go there. I want to go here. I don't want to go into that. But that very choice happening is the personality operating and the thing that keeps you from finding what we're to what life beyond personality. That very choice is the problem. The personality coming and saying, I want this and I don't want that is spiritual bypassing. So um, of course, you could say, oh, well, this is uh, offering a, a system or a program, but uh, I think there is a path. There is a kind of path, but the path is not believing this and thinking those thoughts and, uh, and uh, immersing yourself in those concepts is, is what's given as a path. But if there is a path here, the path is to see what is. That's the real root of inquiry. And seeing what is means seeing who you are or who you think you are, what the false self is. Yep. And that's nothing to do with belief, taking on a non-dual belief or a absolutist belief. There's no one there. It's nothing to do with beliefs. It's to do with seeing. Yeah. This, this is really scary because you can find out so many things. You can find out I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I've got a rescue syndrome. That's why I'm doing this job. Could, you could find out my relationship is 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 a personality game joke. Yeah. These things, even uh, my my parents are playing this game with me, or my children, and yeah, 
Yeah, and who want, who wants to see that? Yeah. Not the personality. The personality does not want to see that. You have to but be yearning. Ready. Sorry, go on. Just you have to be ready to to face that stuff. I mean, it's... Yeah, this is what we mean by by readiness with a capital R. You know, readiness means that you are ready to go beyond the control of that personality that makes those decisions, those uh, choices to not look here. That's what readiness is, that the yearning has kind of suffused the system so much that it's actually um, informing action. Action meaning I will look at this, I will look at whatever I need to look at. If I need to see that I've got a rescuer syndrome, I will see it. Like, who doesn't want to see that? I mean, it's interesting. Why would you not want to see the structure of your personality and its particular quirks. Well, the personality doesn't want to see it because the personality doesn't want to be dissolved. It wants to continue. So maintaining its citadel and all its tricks and its structures is its job. So you, again, you have to be beyond personality just to kind of even question that. Um, but in this, seeing all those, you know, Difficult things you might want to call them to see about how you are, how your life is, becomes why wouldn't you want to see it? If you want to find this, you will look at anything. Everything is seen. And yeah. it doesn't become a big deal. It's like, oh, it's more like you're more interested. Oh, look at that pattern I've got, I've had. And there's energy in it because <laughs> in seeing it, you're already halfway out of it. <laughs> to be able to see it, without flinching from it and to understand it, you're already, it's losing its kind of place in your, in your kind of psyche. Yeah, it's, it's so much better to, to relax in that regard and just see everything as it is, as opposed to hoping not to be exposed or hoping not to be uncovered by, by other people or by myself. Yeah. Strange game, but it's it's so important. What a game, yeah, and what a lot of energy it takes. <laughs> what a lot of energy that takes, and when that starts to fall away, it releases a lot of energy because it takes so much to maintain that um, life like that. But the price you pay is you see things you might, you know, the personality wouldn't want to see. That is the price you pay. One of the big prices you pay. I was talking to someone about this yesterday is that when you start to find who you are beyond personality, there can be a feeling of like, where have I been? I've like kind of, you can even have the feeling I've wasted my life, you know, because I thought I was this and that was important. When you find this, what becomes important to you is totally different things. So the previous life in which making money or whatever it was that was important to you, just immediately decreases. The, the things that are important to you beyond personality are totally different. For example, what we've been talking about, what's important to you is to see life as it is, whatever that is. But the other side before this, it's important for you to not see life as it is. I don't want to look at that. I don't want to look at that. I want to maintain this. I want to strive for that because then I'll be happy when I achieve that. There's a lot of energy that that takes, uh, yeah. By the way, there's no um, criticism implied of, you know, earlier I talked about the two different types of people. Well, this is a whole nother subject now. You know, this again is seeing life as it is. The fact that you one can see you're either into this or you're not. If you're not into this, if someone is not into this, if, if there was criticism of it, that would be personality again. But if there is just seeing of it, you are just seeing how life is. Some people do not have this yearning in them. They just don't. And you accept that's how they are. Just as you accept, I'm not like that. There is this yearning in me and therefore I follow it and fulfill it. So it's not a criticism thing. It's more just like choices of ways and it sees it. Yeah. Um... Uh, I envy you for that, but uh, I, I feel more uh, intrigued in a negative way, let's say, um, or uh, appalled, 
I'm scared even sometimes scared of of just the automatic ways that that, that people operate on category A. So category A. <laughs> yeah. I mean already it sounds terribly divisive and horrible, like us and them. But so like I said, I mean beautiful that you're admitting that because that is choiceless awareness admitting something you're seeing in your personality. So that's that's fine, you know. But uh, it has to be said and used very carefully and without personality in the end. I mean, it's very freeing when you can see it like that. This is just how this person's made. Oh, yeah, no, I can see that the, the less stakes that my personality has in it, that the less uh, the yeah. less heavy it is to, to see category A. Yeah, that's right. Because, because uh, like there, there's no if there's no personality reaction, like it doesn't perceive it as an injustice, then then it's really it can be seen for what it is, just people doing the thing. How would you see it? How would it see it as an injustice? My personality would would blame uh, category A. Now we are using that vocabulary for the pain in my life, for the suffering in my life, for the stuff that I can't achieve and all this stuff so how would how does that work because you mean because the the yearning in you wasn't recognized and honored they helped you not live it is that what you mean yeah yeah my personality is uh, rebellious dramatic and so it it always had the, the system or authorities or in in a larger sense the masses responsible for for my being an outcast or or not being able to achieve success and not really yeah. being able to fit in yeah so this is my personality reacting to category a yeah and i suppose another thing the personality likes is to have an enemy and and a, a kind of scapegoat and uh you know let's face it on one level it is true that you know this system this world is not built on uh, finding life beyond personality it's not and therefore it's true that you in general everyone grows up like you did with this not being honored in them and uh, yeah again we have to see uh, the, the view of beyond personality of that is that seeing life as it is that's just a fact like why it's like that you know, we can have dreams or beliefs like, wouldn't it be great if everybody knew this? Wouldn't it be great if children were brought up to remember this? I mean, that's a lovely thing. Yeah. Maybe, but, in, but the fact is, it's not like that. And yeah, we can make a thing of it. And there's a level of anger there for what you could say was done to us, maybe. That's what you're talking about. And the, the only thing to do with that is, as you are, you're aware of it and you're seeing it and that's your path to go beyond that yeah yeah the the, the emotional part is 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 going away because the emotional yeah. part is it's got this personality emotion or i would say it's resentment yeah and you can see you know regarding what we were saying earlier if if you were a spiritual personality you would be saying well, I don't want to feel that anger. I don't want to look at that because I'm spiritual. And then <laughs> that's bypassing. Whereas you are actually seeing life as it is. Oh, it's there. And as long as it's there, it's there. And um, you see it for what it is. There's almost, you could say, well, there's a kind of justification for it. And then there's, you get to a point where like, if you're stuck in the emotion of that, that's also personality, you know? So you might need to release feelings about it might need to work through it but in the end um it becomes redundant really you know the further you go into this the more you're released into well that's that's just how it is that's how it was you know um was it really your parents fault you know you can go on and on into it because well they were brainwashed that what they were they were brought up in that way the society made them that way they also had the same light you have in you, but it wasn't heard or nurtured, and then they were damaged. Logically, you can get to a point where you can see, can I really blame them? But that's not really what we're talking about, because your experience was with these parents, and this was the emotion, 
the feeling that was brought up in you. Therefore, this is it. And this is why we come back to that phrase, this is it. This is it. It's the most powerful phrase. I talk about it in the end of the second book. This is it is sums up everything we've spoken about today. It's not this is it, but this isn't it. 